a Swiss businessman arrived at Solferino in the afternoon of a bloody battle. That same night, his horror and indignation at the inhumane treatment which the wounded were receiving led him to organize, with such means as were at hand, a relief action in a neighboring church. Three years later, wishing to tell the world what he had seen, he published A Memory of Solferino, a book which constituted an appeal to humanitarian sentiment, a book which shook all Europe. The man was Henri Dunant. His appeal was directed to everyone. Because something had to be done. To alleviate the suffering of all. In the name of humanity. Dunant proposed a solution. Volunteers should be recruited in time of peace so that they could act in time of war. But Dunant was a realist. He knew that his proposal would remain a dream if it were not accepted by all the armies of the world. A dream. An idea. In the name of humanity. Four citizens of Geneva joined Dunant in forming the International Committee of the Red Cross. The same year, he succeeded in getting the Swiss government to convene an international conference in which 12 governments participated, resulting in the signature of a convention to ameliorate the condition of military wounded on the field of battle. This was the first Geneva Convention, the birth of modern international humanitarian law. The start of a road. From now on, military sick and wounded would be cared for. Assisted without distinction. For the first time, medical staff and equipment should be respected. And identified by a distinctive sign. A red cross on a white background. And in the name of humanity, an idea. An attitude. To bring hope to all those who suffer. But we have a long way to go. We will have to be neutral. Independent. Impartial. To reach everyone. We will have to organize. And arrange to go everywhere. And recruit more volunteers. And found societies. In all countries. United under one banner. And by a common idea. To protect life and dignity. In the name of humanity. We will have to protect the shipwrecked, the prisoners, the civilians. We will have to protect everyone in time of war and in time of peace from hunger, epidemics, disaster. We will need people to help other people for the sake of humanity. For the first time, agreement is reached on assistance to the victims of disaster in time of peace. There are already 24 national societies. for the wounded, sick, and shipwrecked of armed forces at sea.
countless volunteers from national societies from both sides and neutral countries mobilize. Twenty-eight national societies form a federation to benefit, in time of peace, from Red Cross wartime experience. To promote the development of national societies, to fight effectively against sickness and hunger, and to coordinate disaster relief. The first large-scale international relief operation coordinated by the League. 5,000 volunteers take part in the relief operation for victims of the Tokyo and Yokohama earthquakes. Soldiers taken prisoner of war are protected from cruelty. Imprisoned soldiers shall be identified, fed, and housed with dignity. They are entitled to receive correspondence and medical treatment. They must be repatriated immediately after the end of active hostilities. There are already 57 national societies. The first large-scale relief operation in the Third World coordinated by the International Committee of the Red Cross. Prisoners of war receive protection and assistance. Missing people are traced. Food, clothing and medicines are sent to civilians in 18 countries caught up in the conflict. Civilians shall be protected and treated humanely in all circumstances. It is prohibited to kill, mutilate or torture civilians, to take them hostage, to humiliate, execute or attack them. Sixty-seven national societies. The process of decolonization resulted not only in the founding of new national societies, but also in the emergence of new needs. The following means and methods of warfare are prohibited. Indiscriminate attacks or bombardment, weapons of mass destruction, and hunger. All people, 
whether soldiers or civilians, must be respected. There are already 126 national societies. changes its name and becomes the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Today, we have 150 national societies. For the last 128 years, the symbols of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent have been ever present where people suffer always but war destruction and pain have not ceased the road is still long an idea a commitment protecting life and dignity the world over in the name of humanity.